Hi guys, this is Omer from MMOHot.com, and I'm doing another quick weekly recap of MMO news and announcements for the week ending September 25th, 2011. And as you can see from the video playing in the background, the first piece of news that we're taking a look at this week has to do with the superhero themed DC Universe Online. And the news is that the subscription based MMORPG will be relaunching as a free to play game sometime in October. Sony Online Entertainment, the game's publisher, announces a bit of news officially on September 19th, 2011, and says that the free to play users will have access to all of the game's current content with the restrictions on the character slots and certain powers in game. The game will have three tiers of accounts, free, premium, and legendary. Hopefully the game isn't too restrictive, but based on the press release that the company released, free to play users should be able to access the bulk of the game, with only a handful of restrictions. Now this move shouldn't come as a surprise to you guys because I've been saying for well over a year now that free to play is the future of gaming. I'm just surprised the game didn't launch as free to play, but rather became free to play so soon after launching. I do look forward to giving the game a chance when it becomes free to play later this October. Next up guys, on September 20th, 2011, Games Campus came out and announced that there would be a new update for Scarlet Legacy launching on September 21st, so it already launched. The new update brings Guild Wars to the game, and I'm not talking about the game by NC, so I'm talking about Guild vs Guild Battle PvP options into the game. We're up to 6 skills at a time with up to 120 players at once in battle and battle royale style free for all competition. Aside from Guild Wars, new combat skills will be available to players between level 46 and 50 along with 80 new quests, 50 new items, 4 new types of pets and 130 new crafting recipes. A new outdoor field map called Very Late and 10 player dungeons have been added to the game. This update launched on September 21st and for those that didn't know Scarlet Legacy is published by Games Campus. The next bit of news this week guys is that Nexon announced an official launch date for Dragon's Nest. Now keep in mind the game was already out with the open beta, but the game's official release date is set for September 28th. Now to celebrate the official commercial launch of the game, Nexon is releasing a patch which will increase the level cap to 32, as well as add 6 to 8 new skills for each specialization in game. Also a new city, Saints Haven, will offer a new storyline and daily quests, which are part of the over 500 new quests being added in this patch. 10 new dungeons, 250 new achievements, and a new season of PvP gear, as well as special events will, will be launching with the patch. And once again, the official launch date for the game is September 28th. Up next guys, as of September 21st, 2011, Recursive Colony arrives in Global Agenda. Recursive Colony is the game's latest free expansion pack, which introduces a new open zone, mission instances, and new enemies to the game. Also including the update are repeatable quests, solo and team, new dyes, flare, trails, pets, blueprints, improved crafting, redesigning intro missions, cross instance chat channels, and two new PvP maps called Push Dust and Colony Caverns. For those that haven't heard of Global Agenda, it's a buy to play third person MMO shooter gone free to play. The company behind Global Agenda, Hi Res Studios, is also developing another free to play game called Tribes Ascend. And the video you're seeing in the background is actually the official trailer for the Recursive Colony update, which again already went live on September 21st. Next up guys, on September 22nd, 2011, Cheap Potato announces server changes for Prius Online. Server changes include the launch of a new PvE exclusive server for players who want to play the game without PvP. All the game's P PvP servers will also be merged into one to boost the players on that one server, which I think is a good idea. Cheap Potato came out and announced these changes after gathering feedback from current Prius Online players. Cheap Potato did not announce when these changes will be launching, but you can expect them soon. Next up guys, on September 22nd, 2011, Joymax announced the open beta date for Digimon Masters Online. Open beta for the game is scheduled to begin on Tuesday, September 27th. The game will feature three digital data squad members to choose from, Marcus, Thomas, and Yoshino. The game will launch with over 100 Digimon to catch from the first five anime series. The game's open beta will launch with a bonus experience event, so if you're interested in Digimon at all, definitely check the game out during its open beta. Well guys, that's your MO news, but as for the games coming soon, we have nothing to look at, but for as for recently launched titles, we have two games to look at, and the first one is Nine Dragon. Games, which relaunched on Games Campus. Now, Night Dragons is a bit of an interesting game because it was first launched on a claim, but it shut down through a claim and then it went to Gamers First, where it also shut down and now it is on Games Campus. And yes, the video you're seeing in the background is the official uh, launch kind of preview trailer for the game, even though it's got no actual gameplay and that's why they chose this video to use. But yeah, it's the official video on the game's website. But it's kind of odd that the game shut down so many times, but it is, it is live now on Games Campus, so the game is still alive and kicking. Those interested in PvP heavy games may want to check Nine Dragons out. Next and last game we're taking a look at this week is Lubinia Online, which officially launched on September 22nd, 2011. The game is published by Outspark and has been in open beta for quite a while now, but is now launched into full release. With the launch of the game's official release, the game's item store is now open for business. Outspark plans to really roll out an update for the game, which will increase the level cap soon, but no player has yet to reach the game's current level cap of 78. Anyway guys, that's it for MMO news and announcements for the week ending September 25th, 2011. Now if you want to read about or learn more about any of the news mentioned in this video, simply head on over to mmo.com slash news. And if you want to discuss anything in this video, simply head on over to mmo.com slash forums. Anyway guys, this is Omer, signing off.